It might be the beginning of summer here on Liberty's campus, but things are in full swing for the next athletic season coming up here in the fall. And here to tell us more about that is Athletics Director Jeff Barber. And before we kind of talk about this fall, Jeff, let's uh, kind of recap the spring for you. How are things been going since baseball and softball? Some of those uh, spring sports have ended. I know the Big South had their meeting. So what's the spring and early summer been like for you? Um, best thing to say was just wrapping up the season. You know, we've got end of the year. There's always a lot of personnel issues that, that you face. There's also, uh, facility issues, things you're trying to fix. So we basically are taking a look back, a debriefing of the whole year and saying, okay, what do we need to do? How can we get better? So a lot of that, a lot of meetings going on and we're already starting to prepare for next fall. Realignment continues to be a, a big focus around the country, not only you know in other leagues, but also here at Liberty with uh, the aspirations of moving up to FBS. I know there was a courtship with the Sun Belt, and uh, they added, decided not to add a 12th team, but I know we left that uh, really encouraged uh, for the future and what's going to happen here. We are. Uh, we continue to do all the right things, I believe, Alan, and all that we can do to put ourselves in the best position. Uh, to move to FBS. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a decision the Sun Belt made, and, and we understand that. And um, we'll just continue to get better, and we do hope for good things in the future. What did Liberty learn from, from the process uh, that maybe we can benefit from moving forward? You know, I think probably the best thing we learned is that we've been doing a lot of the right things. Uh, we've got a great commitment from President Falwell and the university, and, and we've done a lot of uh, the things that you need to do to build a program. I think, I think the infrastructure's in place, the personnel. Um, so it's just encouraging because one of the things you do is you look and see how you compare with other schools and other FBS schools and, you know, different conferences, not just the Sun Belt. And I think um, we were very encouraged that we've done a lot of good things and, um, and I think we're on the right track. Around the bigger landscape of college athletics, the five power conferences talking about moving to a Division Four, maybe, and there's the word autonomy and them wanting more of that. If they do move to a Division Four, and again, all of this is hypothetical and speculation, but if that was to happen, how would that affect schools like Liberty? Well, a lot of the things uh, that they're talking about are still to be determined. For example, uh, the transfer issue. They want to be able to transfer within those schools and, and, and leagues like the Big South and others have concerns about that for many reasons. Um, you know, if you look at transfer students, they don't graduate like, like normal students or, or uh, one that does not transfer. So, Alan, I think the best answer is that there are some issues that um, would affect us. I don't think anything's going to be a major impact on us. It may be we don't have the opportunity to play those Power Five, but we'll still be able to play other FBS schools, and and so we would obviously want to do that. But um, I think once everything is settled and and the, and the NCAA moves forward with the governance structure and 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 has all these resolved, we'll have a better feel for that. But again, from what I'm seeing right now and hearing, I don't think anything would have a major major impact on us and and um, or the direction that we go. We continue to see more and more stories online around the country about the fan experience and how important that is uh, coming to games. From a fan experience perspective, uh, what are some things in the hopper for Liberty and some things you might would like to see here down the road? Well, first of all, you're right. Game experience is big. I think I think the days of uh, years ago, I guess, when people would come to a game and, and it was the, the only show in town, it's, it's just not that anymore, whether it's the number of games on television or, you know, social media and all those things. So we're looking at all the different uh, things that other people are doing. We're, we're We've been, uh, done some interviewing of our own students to find out, you know, where we're weak and what we can do to be better. One of the things we're looking at is an improved cell signal. Uh, you know, if you come to a game and you can't get on your Facebook or can't get on Twitter or something, you know, people get irritated and they're ready to move on. So, you know, we're looking at a lot of different things right now, um, even things that we can do and build in the stadium, such as in baseball we put the, uh, for the fire pit in there. And yeah. what other thing? what can we do here that would uh, that would – just make it more fun to come to the games and, and keep people from leaving early or, or not coming at all. I always like catching with you, Jeff, and talking about facilities. I know it's one important part uh, of your job. And it seems like the golf uh, clubhouse and the softball stadium are, are continuing to move forward. Uh, update us on those and what uh, might be uh, up uh, the hopper coming up down the road here. Well, I was in the golf uh, uh, clubhouse um, last week, and they are making great progress on that. We expect the end of the summer, uh, September, to move in. 
Uh, and the same with softball. Softball is moving along quickly, and we expect by the probably the end of September that that will be fully functional and ready to go. And uh, we're excited about that. What's coming up, you know, one of the one of the things we're looking at now is a new weight room and a new a central weight room and a central training room. Um, and so that is something that, that we're discussing and also uh, the potential for an indoor practice football facility. Um, it'll be something that not only football will use, but our other sports can use as well. So those are probably the two largest things. Uh, we've also got um, a natatorium. I should have included that, uh, building a new, a new pool, uh, a new natatorium with a diving well so we can add, we can add diving. Um, so those three things are probably uh, the main th- three that we're looking at, and, and it'll be great, a great blessing to have those. Staffing uh, continues to evolve here at Liberty, not just coaches, but uh, administrative staff as well. Uh, how do you develop uh, a plan on when to add staff, when not to, and what is a good pace to do that? Well, it's a great question. You know, if you have two, two programs and one is successful and one is not, do you reward the one that's successful and build them up, or do you give one to the one that's struggling and try to help them? We are fortunate, um, Alan, that uh, we've been able to add um, support staff, coaching staff over the last eight years. So all of our sports are in great shape. They have all the accountable coaches that the NCAA will allow. Will allow. Uh, and there, there are FBS programs out there um, that don't, don't have that option and don't have that ability. And it's a great blessing for us to be able to have that. So you know what? You, you really, at this point, we're deciding where are our biggest needs, what can move the program uh, further the quickest, and uh, what's our, our biggest need at that moment. It's that simple. The VHSL recently wrapped up their spring jubilee here a couple of weeks ago. What was the reaction to having all those uh, teams and parents and uh, sponsors here on campus? Well, Mickey Garetti met with the VHSL people just a couple days ago. The debriefing with that was uh, excellent. Uh, they gave very high reviews for everything. Um, you know, a couple of little glitches that we need to work on that we'll fix for next year. Uh, parents coming in and the, the athletes that were here just really blown away by the facilities and what we had to offer. Uh, we are hosting the VHSCA uh, in another couple of weeks uh, for their all-star games. And we're also looking to perhaps add the independent leagues as well. So, you know, um, everybody's been really, truly amazed. It's one of those things that people don't really, if they don't know much about Liberty when they get here, they just really can't believe what they're seeing and are just terrifically impressed. So it was very, very good. I know working with you, Jeff, uh, you're always looking ahead to the future. Have you thought about uh, the fall coming up, not just any particular sport, but getting ready for the next athletic season? Have I not thought about it for one hour? Probably No. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about it, uh, looking forward. I feel really good about um, our sports, and I think we have – you know, we didn't have as good a year this year as we had hoped to. If you don't win the Sasser Cup, it's not a good year. And uh, we were very disappointed in not doing that. You know, you can look at reasons or why and not excuses, but what do we have to do to get better? And I think we've, we've addressed a lot of the concerns that we may have had, and uh, we've got programs that are really solid right now, and I'm, I'm looking forward to a very big year. Well, thanks, Jeff, for the insight, and we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you much. That's Athletics Director Jeff Barber. I'm Alan York for Liberty Flame Sports Network.